Welcome Outlander, my name is Leon, and I'm on a mission to give you a closer look at the regions of Vardenfell. We'll be going over the settlements, ingredients, and things of note in each distinct biome. Today, we start our travels in the Bitter Coast region, the first stop in your Morrowind adventure. Quite an, um, uplifting scene, isn't it? The Bitter Coast is laden with shipwrecks, smugglers' caves, and hollowed out tree stumps, with all kinds of goodies inside. It stays mostly cloudy, bit of rain, with plenty of mud crabs and slime, or goo, your choice. Let's get into the settlements that you'll find in the Bitter Coast region. There are three main settlements in the Bitter Coast. Sedanin is where our adventure begins. Sedanin is the gateway to Vardenfell with no boat transport, but a silt strider and some limited services. Unlike the rest of the Bitter Coast, it is unpopular with smugglers, likely due to the census and excise office. That doesn't mean you can't weasel your way in there though. Sedanin's visited throughout the game and for a variety of faction and miscellaneous quests, but overall there isn't too much enticing or special about it. You sort of cut your teeth here, in a way. The next settlement in the Bitter Coast, moving north along the coast, is Hla'od. Hla'od is a small fishing village, popular with smugglers and has some boat transport, but again, not a super interesting or notable place in general. There are some quests that bring you in or around Hla'od, and perhaps the most notable thing might be Fat Legs Drop Off, which houses a Kamanatong smuggling hideout in its basement. And our third and final settlement of the Bitter Coast is Narmok. Narmok is another small fishing village, still popular with smugglers, but with better boat transport than Hla'od, for example. But still, there's not very much going on. There's limited services, lots of shacks, and a little Hlalu Manor overlooking it all. Ingredients Throughout the Bitter Coast, alchemists and travelers can find a copious amount of Bungler's Bane, Hypha Fascia, Violet Copernus, and Luminous Rosulla. The bungler's bane and hypha fascia are found on trees and stumps, and the luminous rosella can be found around those trees as well. Violet copperness is found alongside the other mushrooms, but it can also be found in these little swamp pits alongside ampoule pods and coda flowers. Spore pods can be collected from the slough ferns found scattered around the land as well. In addition to these, more lucky adventurers have a smaller chance of running into stuff like hackle lowleaf, chokeweed, and some stone flowers. In addition to the plants, there's plenty of mud crabs, nixhounds, netch, quama foragers, scribs, though you wouldn't kill a scrib, would you? Slaughterfish, drew, and of course cliff racers. There's also some kagooty and rats roaming around here as well. Another ingredient you're likely to stumble upon in the Bitter Coast is moon sugar. This is smuggler's territory after all. So check out all the hollow tree stumps and shipwrecks if you're looking to put a little pep in your step. Things of interest. Cartag Point is a landmark important to orcs that can be found northwest of Narmok. Some famous orc died here in a battle and another orc died here on a dare. If you talk to Boethia, a talented orc sculptor will build a statue of Boethia here. Hlormarin is an ancient Dunmer stronghold, filled to the brim with slaves to free and slavers to remove from the mortal plane. There's a propylon chamber with access to Mirandus and Andrath here as well. Odai Plateau is right by Balmora. It's kind of on the border of the Bitter Coast in the Escadian Isles. This will eventually become the Hlalu stronghold, so if you're in Hlalu, your house will be here. The Sunken Shrine of Boethia is underwater, northwest of Hlaod, west of Ashurnabibi and Shal. Speaking to the severed head of Boethia will initiate a quest for the Daedra. Andrethi Ancestral Tomb is a hideout for some unaffiliated vampires of the Burn Clan, so if you want to be a Burn Vampire, you can come here and get infected by them. It's west of Bailmora by a little swamp pit. Ashal Mimilkala is a Daedric shrine where you can find one of the 26 threads of the web spinner, the belt of sanguine martial craft, which has a constant effect fortify armorer five points on self. This abandoned shack is a cute little abandoned shack where you can find the Pulitzer Prize winning Noah's picture book of wood. It also has an incredible view. You could live here if you wanted. 
Ilunibi is a huge six house base that you visit in the main quest. There's not much to say about it. It is very scary and if you complete the game you will spend a lot of time in here. The Mentor's Ring is an ancient artifact with constant effect fortify intelligence and fortify willpower 10 points on self. This ring is found in Samaris Ancestral Tomb, northwest of Sedanin. It's also mentioned in the book that Yagram Bargon wrote on artifacts of Tamriel called Tamrielic Lore, so if you're trying to collect all these rare items, you'll definitely want to visit this tomb. And finally, there is Tarheel, or uh, Tarheel's resting place. On his pitiful body, you can find three scrolls of Ikarian flight for speedrunning and other creative endeavors. And after all that, I think it is safe to say that you now have a better understanding of the kinds of things that you can find on the Bitter Coast. What do you think? Is there a cave or something that you think should have been added to the list? Or is there something that you think that I may have missed? The Bitter Coast is kind of dreary, but I think there's still plenty going on here to keep you occupied for a while. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.